I, I asked about the Shia. I was like, who are the Shia? Don't worry about them. Just avoid them. Da da da. You know, it's 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 in their Akita to lie. You know, they do Taki all the time. And I was like, whatever, fine. So I left the Shia thing alone. And we received a sheikh from Sudan. Um, his English skills were limited. But when he moved to the Virgin Islands, he noticed that minority of Shias in the community. And one of the first speeches that he gave was a speech rather critical of Tashayyo and of followers of Ahl Bayt al Rasul. So, me being a new convert and me not knowing the difference between Sunni or Shia, when I heard this speech of his, well, it became imperative to me that I should know who are the Shias also, because if they are disbelievers, and if they are as dangerous as the Sheikh is saying that they are, then uh, I should know about them, and I should be on my guard and be wary of them. الشيعه وغيرهم كل من هو مخالف لاهل السنه والجماعه لا تصاحبه على ماذا تصاحبه على معاداه اهل السنه والجماعه على مسبه الصحابه على الطوام التي عندهم لا تصاحبهم اعتبرهم اعداء لك وللمسلمين تعامل معهم معامله العدو نعم so i started trying to learn more about Shias after hearing that how dangerous and how kafir and how bad they were. So I wanted to learn more. Uh, they're a Shia family from Middle East um, and the knowledge which they provided me and also not just the knowledge but also the attitude and the way in which they invited me towards the Ahlul Bayt. Uh, many of my Sunni brothers unfortunately the the way they would try to bring me towards their way of thinking would be to kind of highlight negative points about Shiaism, uh, whether the Shia uh, brothers and sisters uh, would actually, one thing which I'll say, my uh, cousin in Woking who actually helped me to revert, the first thing he said to me is, um, whatever you want to do, if you want to, however you want to pray, and whatever belief, whatever books you want to read is entirely up to you. He didn't mind whether I became Sunni or anything. It wouldn't affect our relationship at all. And he would actually be happy for me if I became Sunni. And this in particular is what made me think, well, if this is the attitude which I'm being told by the Shia brothers of mine, then perhaps Shiaism has a very good way of thinking, which I like. This is a Sunni Sheikh of the Masjid. He told me, brother, Islamic history is a black and bloody history and it has no relevance to us today. Don't read it. Being a person who had studied the writings of Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey is like a prophet to Rastafarians. Marcus Garvey has a famous saying where he says, a people without knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. So when this Sunni Sheikh is going to tell me that Islamic history is irrelevant, has no relevance, it's black and it's bloody, don't study it. An alarm bell went off in my mind. I felt that he was trying to keep me away from something. And so this pushed me in the direction to study more. Another time they told us at the masjid that when Shias finish their prayer, they say, Khana Amin, Khana Amin, Khana Amin. In the Risala, 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 the هو ماذا يقصد بها؟ يقول فيها تاه الأمين تاه الأمين تاه الأمين يعني سيدنا جبريل عليه السلام تاه في رسالته فبدل أن ينزل على علي نزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أمين is جبرائيل that جبرائيل did خيانات that جبرائيل was treacherous, that he went to Muhammad instead of Ali. So when I would hear these things from Ahl Sunnah, 
immediately I would go to the Shias and ask them about that. You know, for instance, with this Khana Amin, when I went and prayed with them, when they finished their prayer, I was listening to hear what they said. And surely I heard them say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I was like, nah, man, that's not true. Oh, but I'm from Yemen, I know the Houthis. Uh, okay, but this is, this, is, this is their beliefs, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the classic, oh, uh, Gabriel made their mistake, Gabriel. I was like, nah, man, it's Allahu Akbar three times, man. I was like, nah, they're like, yo, you better calm down, Harun. You better, I want to think you're a Shia. I was like, whatever, man. And One of the aspects of coming to Shiism was uh, one Imam that I connected with always the most that helped me with the transition to Islam uh, with the permission of Allah was Amir al-Mu'mini, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because when, even when you read history and you hear about all the different aspects of Amir al-Mu'mini, Imam Ali, where there was in battle, his bravery, how almost all the battles that he defended Rasulullah, that he defended Islam, that he helped save the Ummah from the opposing enemy, whether it had been in the battle of Badr, whether it had been in the battle of Hud, with all the different, uh, all the main people on the opposing side who were the best fighters, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he, uh, destroyed them. He wiped them out. That Rasulullah said that, La fata illa Ali, la saifun illa dhu fakar. In the battle of Uhud, when Amir al Mu'minin alayhi was fighting and he was defending Rasulullah, that he was fighting so hard that his sword broke. So Angel Jibreel alayhi salam came down and he gave him dhu fakar, a sword from uh, the heavens. So this is one aspect, but also as well that this was the main dispute between Shia and Sunni, Imam Ali, listen, this is the divided line, that Imam Ali was the one that they say, no, he was just a Sahaba, just a normal, ordinary person. No, the Shia say, no, he was a divine Imam who was divinely sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So reading the different hadith about Imam Ali, uh, Rasulullah said in one hadith, Zayyinu mujadi sakum bi dhikra Ali. And ever since then, there was always that intense and close connection with Amir al-Mu'mineen because uh, reading about him, you know, it just impresses you. The different characteristics, his character, his worship, everything about Amir al-Mu'mineen, it impressed an individual to say that this had to be somebody sent by Allah. This can't be an ordinary individual who's just a normal companion, but it had to be been somebody who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Imam Hussein was on one side and, uh, uh, and Yazid was on another, they must have been fighting for two different things. Um, Yazid was the one who was beheading people, Yazid was the one who was oppressing pe people exactly the same way as Daesh are doing now. So you can see it, that the Imam was prepared to sacrifice himself and his own family in, in opposition to that cause, which is exactly what the sort of thing we're seeing today. So. Um, from that point of view, that the importance of the Kabbalah episode is to portray, particularly to non-Muslims, that there is a there is an alternative version which the um, events of Ashur and uh, the events of Kabbalah um, um, highlight. Also, can't say, well, look what it did to the women, look what it did to Zainab. Um, that there is a version of Islam which promotes the rights of women, which promotes the interests of women, which promotes the development of. Um, the, the community and of individuals, and it's not—it's not about killing and slaying and um, uh, keeping people in a state of continual oppression. A bus drove past a Shia information centre, and so I decided to go in and give salams to the Shia brothers there and find out what they said. I'm never content being told by others what these third party says. And I decided to go and talk to them. Uh, what I found there was um, an intellectual discourse about religion, a concern about uh, historiography and accuracy. And thus I'd, I'd actually unwittingly found the branch of Islam that suited me. And so I, I joined the Hauser in Birmingham and for the next, I think, five years, I was... I actually began looking at Shia Islam first. And then when I compared it with Sunni Islam, uh, decided that the Shia version made much more sense. And so uh, in June of last year, 2006, I accepted um, uh, the faith, became a Shia Muslim. 
Now, the question comes, why, do, uh, why did I like Shia Islam over um, Sunni Islam? To me, uh, logic and, and coherence make um, much sense. They're important factors in um, uh, one's faith. What I saw in Shia Islam, looking at the five roots of the faith, was a constructive uh, building on foundations. Uh, first of all, you have the belief in uh, God. You follow that with an understanding of how God interacts with human beings, the justice of God. Uh, then the next uh, root is that God sends prophets to let mankind know what his requirements are to worship him, to honor him. Uh, the next step is that uh, God also sends imams to carry on the message in between the sending of prophets. And finally, uh, that there is indeed an afterlife. To me, that progression made far more sense than the Sunni presentation of the five pillars in which the only basic doctrinal point is that of uh, the fact that God is one. The rest of the points all deal with practice and the thing that that I started mulling over was how can one base one's faith on a set of practices it makes far more sense to look at doctrine and then on the doctrine base your practices. So for me, the, uh, the five roots of, of Shia Islam made far more sense than the five pillars of Sunni Islam. Is that I became a Shia Muslim and why after four years I decided to reject Sunni Islam. Um, the main reason in fact, the two main reasons are based on a single hadith. And this hadith is located within uh, Sahih Muslim. It's in Book 31, it's hadith number 5920. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he says, I am leaving among you two weighty things. The one being the Book of Allah in which there is right guidance and light. So hold fast to the Book of Allah and adhere to it. He exhorted to hold fast to the Book of Allah and then said, the second are the members of my household, Ahobay. I remind you of your duties to them, the members of my family, uh, to, you, to your duties to the members of my family. And I began reading it. When I got to the section on Imam Hussein, I was flabbergasted, stunned, shocked to find out that Imam Hussein had been surrounded at Karbala and killed. I couldn't fathom it. I couldn't believe it that the grandson of the Prophet whom even as Sunnis we learn that Prophet loved him so much that the fact that he was surrounded and killed by Muslims, it shocked me. So this I had to go to the masjid with. And I went to the masjid and I called the Shaykh and I said, Shaykh, you have to explain this to me. What happened at Karbala? And it, it, was, it was actually around the time of Ashura. And so I was like, okay, what are you, what are you, what are you doing on Ashura? I'm going to fast, Habibi. I'm going to fast. When did Imam Hussein die? Uh, uh, the, the Ashura? No, yeah. How come you never heard about it on the mimbar? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And he kept it at that. It's, it, it's insane. It's insane. The twelve caliphs? Who, who, the, who, the, who, this hadith says there'll be twelve caliphs after me, all from Quraysh. Who, who are the twelve? Who are the twelve? Who are the twelve? We will answer this question from Shikai. الشق الأول هو الأصل لا نعلمهم لأن هذا خبر من خبر الغيب لا يتوقف عليه حكم لا يتوقف عليه حكم وإنما هو خبر وإنما هو إيش خبر هذا أمر وإذا لك عرفنا ولا من يعرفهم لا يترتب عليه شيء oh but this guy down the street can name me twelve like that oh no 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 don't don't listen to them you know Abu Bakr Umar Uthman Muawiyah Yazid I'm like okay sure the more I started to research about the topics, about the Imams, about the followers of the Prophet, about the Prophet himself, the way he used to uh, 
to pray, things like this, and issues, uh, beliefs, topics, stories, everything. Eventually, I came to the realization that Shiaism and the way in which they follow the Imams after the Prophet and the Imams themselves were such inspirational people in their time, even to this day, their, uh, their sayings, their stories and what they stood for still stands in the modern day, the way that they stood up against injustice, the way that they uh, fought for the weaker people in society at the time. It's just such a fantastic example of how human beings should be. How can I follow anyone else except the Ahlul Bayt, who are by far, in my entire life, I've never seen a more a uh, perfect example of how a family, how people should be in life, not just religiously, but also in society, the way that they act to people and the way that they are with everybody on this planet. So in the end, it was really down to studying more about the Imams, studying more about Shias themselves and listening to the debates and discussions between Sunni and Shia, which really led me to believe that Shia was the one for me because my beliefs were far more similar to Shia than to the Sunni and although we are all Muslims at the end of the day the way that I choose to follow God is the way in following Imam Ali and so I read then I was guided and the, the way Dr. Chijani went about it how he would only take hadith that both sides agree on and of course the Quran so I was like, you know, that sounds that sounds pretty foolproof. So I did it, and I, I would just, even before I accepted Shia Islam, I would I would be defending the Shia. Like there was the, a Yemeni deli. I used to uh, they used to support my dawah. So they had like pamphlets and they gave out all the Qurans. And so I was like, no, 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 man, I'm telling you, they pray towards Karbala. And that was like the first question when I got to Masjid Al Bayt. I was like, what direction? What what city is that? The Kaaba or Mecca? Isn't that it's not Karbala? No, well, where do you come on? Our Qibla is the Qibla. And it, was, it just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. So, certainly, because of Tashayu being more logical, having more reasonable answers, in addition to the irrefutable proofs that exist in Quran, in Ahadith, in history, we became a Shia. However, that thirst for knowledge had been ignited now. I had been through this period where running between the Sunni Masjid and the Shia center and talking and asking and investigating and perusing and studying. Now I decided to myself, no, I won't be led astray anymore by this person or that. I want to go and study for myself. And so this is what opened this chapter in my life. The more I started to research about the topics, about the Imams, about the followers of the Prophet, about the Prophet himself, the way he used to uh, to pray, things like this, and issues, uh, beliefs, topics, stories, everything. Eventually, I came to the realization that Shiaism and the way in which they follow the Imams after the Prophet and the Imams themselves were such inspirational people in their time, even to this day, their, uh, their sayings, their stories, and what they stood for still stands in the modern day, the way that they stood up against injustice, the way that they uh, fought for the weaker people in society at the time, is just such a fantastic example of how human beings should be. How can I follow anyone else except the Ahlul Bayt, who are by far, in my entire life, I've never seen a more uh, perfect example of how a family, how people should be in life, not just religiously, but also in society the way that they act to people and the way that they are with everybody on this planet. So in the end, it was really down to studying more about the Imams, studying more about Shias themselves and listening to the debates and discussions between Sunni and Shia, which really led me to believe that Shia was the one for me because my beliefs were far more similar to Shia than to the Sunni. And although we are all Muslims at the end of the day, the way that I choose to follow God is the way in following Imam Ali And I finally began to learn to understand Islam, not to fight Islam. But the only thing I knew about Shia 
was that you were all a kuffar. You see, I became Muslim in a Salafi Jamaat, <laughs> where me trimming my beard was guilty of shirk. And the Shia prayed to Ali. And that's all I knew. But the more I learned about Salafism, <laughs> the more I learned that I really didn't know anything at all. And when I told my Sheikh that I wanted to ask Shias about Shias, I was told, don't talk to them because they'll lie to you. And it made me think of when I talked to my pastor about asking Muslims about Muslims. And he said, don't talk to them, they'll lie to you. And I can tell you this, I don't know a lot about this religion. Every day I'm learning more. But I know that I have a family now. Because the truth is, if you want to lose your friends, tell them you've become a Muslim. If you want to gain some enemies, tell your Muslim friends that you become Shia. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, I've made hijrah from Louisiana to Michigan. And I now have people that I can call brothers and sisters in this faith. And people that have genuinely made me feel at home and welcome. And I thank you all for that. Long